I think everything has to do with streaming. I think everything comes from music is free with the invention of iTunes. And, and uh, even though you, you do pay for iTunes, but at the end of the day, you don't pay as much. And it's easy to get things free now, basically with an iPhone, I should say. I'm Matt Goodman, and welcome to the Future of Live. I'll be taking you through the journey of up-and-coming musicians as they navigate the ever-changing music industry. I'll be focusing on the artist's perspective because of my background as a drummer and a performer. The music industry has seen many major changes that impact how we experience music and how artists most effectively promote their work. In the early 20th century, artists relied on performance as the main way to get their name out. Towards the 1950s, recording technology improved and the sale of vinyl records supported musicians' careers. Over time, vinyl was replaced by cassettes, CDs, MP3s, and ultimately streaming. Music streaming is a subscription-based model where listeners pay a monthly fee to have access to music catalogs. Streaming opened up a lot of doors for musicians to easily create and upload their music, but it came at the cost of recording-based revenue. For this reason, the music industry has shifted back to live. Artists now use recordings to sell concert tickets and tour for months on end just to make a living. Through my research, I found that the biggest struggle for up-and-coming musicians was the cost of touring, more specifically, travel and accommodations. I began to look more closely at music experiences to find what makes them so incredible for both performers and the crowd. I call the end goal, live but not in person, where musicians are able to avoid the logistical cost of touring while still getting the promotional value of performing. Across all genres, I found that the most important part of performance for the crowd was call and response, or the adaptive relationship between performer and audience. For a musician, the most important parts were networking and collaboration. This one, this one goes out to Yuri. Collaboration for me is definitely one of the biggest elements of my work in both the studio and the live performance. Because I come from a background of playing in acoustic rock bands, and that's all about what you and your friends can bring to a show together and the energy you guys bank off one another. Playing in a band is a lot more fun, by far. Uh, recording with a band is more fun and playing live with a band is much more fun because you're feeding off each other, usually sounds cooler from on stage. Even though I may make electronic music now, we still play with a guitar player and a rapper and I usually use a drum set or a sampler. Collaborating completely changes your sound. entertainment factor that goes into it and not every group has it but when a group really connects with an audience and gets them excited it's undeniable and you can feel that energy all in the room. It's super fun because I mean it's just so much better than performing on your own because it's like I mean you you know you can expect something but like you really never know what's gonna happen you know like uh, it's a lot more uh, spontaneous than just like doing something on your own. Whoever you're working with is an influence on your style and your genre, whether that may be a singer-songwriter or a rapper. The way you work with one another and bounce ideas off each other is one of the biggest influences in your sound, no matter what you do. This group got together, bootheading the chairs, I mean, uh, basically, 
I heard about this gig through my friend uh, Matt Goodman, who after Rock Ensemble was like, hey, we need another act for this show that I'm organizing. You know, can you fill like a 30 minute slot? And I was like, yeah, I could probably get a group together by then. I mean, that's like, we have, I don't know what, like two weeks, three weeks. We, we didn't play any originals at this show, but we're working on originals now. So playing at the Westcott was really cool. I've never played there before. Apparently it's a converted movie theater and it was a lot bigger than I thought it would be. My favorite moment was when um, the rapper Joe went on. He had like a really high energy that got the whole crowd really moving and he was like really inviting and he actually like spoke to us. One of the most important things is the person's stage presence because if you have like someone who just, just doesn't cut sauce, the whole performance is trashed. The goal of the concert at the Westcott Theater was to see how performers interact with crowds and how different aspects of a concert impact the experience from both sides. Kyle Mitchell is a singer-songwriter. Cosmatic is a three-piece alternative rock band. Boothead and the Chairs play classic rock. Bike Lanes on Euclid is an indie rock band with influences from new wave and punk. Joe Morgan is a rapper and singer who plays hip hop and R&B. And Lone Wolf is a DJ specializing in EDM and trap. I learned that stage presence, high volume, and crowd engagement impacted how close the audience got to the performer. Genres that more closely aligned to these elements, like rock, hip-hop, and trap, had more dynamic crowd reactions than those like folk, which rely more on intimacy. Hologig is a platform that connects musicians from remote locations to play concerts together via virtual reality. The performance is then broadcast to a live audience at a concert venue. The main goal of this platform is to help musicians expand their network and promote their music in new areas without the costly problems of touring. From the performer's perspective, Playing in virtual reality allows for a call and response relationship both with other musicians and with the crowd. This is based on my insights about crowd engagement from the Westcott Theater. All the performer needs is a laptop, an audio interface, two cameras, and a virtual reality headset to be able to broadcast their performance to a crowd in a different location. From the crowd's perspective, performances will be broadcast on video boards with concert quality audio. The show will also be accompanied by genre-specific animations that are triggered by speed or tempo of the music and variations in audio frequency. The main benefits of this solution for the performer are a chance to meet new musicians and the chance to play for crowds without having to travel. For the audience, this platform creates unique musical collaborations that otherwise would never happen in a performance. I guess growing up I never really had anybody to like really jam with until I think I was around 12 or 13, I went to this like summer camp that was centered around being in a rock band. And it was so much fun to like meet new people and finally have other people to like play off of and jam with, like it, it was just so much more fun. Playing in VR was really cool because it looked like everyone was right there. VR's fucking dope, man. I mean, once you go to VR, it's like we're living in 3018 over here, like shit. I could play with people that are in a different place. Until someone can afford to tour, I think this is one of those solutions that could help them get their name out.